Hi everyone, I've been away for a couple of weeks. I'm now back and today's review is Snap by Belinda Bauer, which as many of you will know, is on the Booker long list. Um, I have a couple of things to say at the outset and then if you don't like uh, reviews that tear books apart, then this is not a good place for you to be. So a couple of things. I have nothing against genre fiction. Uh, there is a lot of genre fiction I like. Uh, I grew up on thrillers. I still enjoy reading thrillers. I love spy novels. I read John le Carré over and over again. I read Mick Heron recently, didn't particularly like him, but it wasn't an objection to genre fiction. So point one, no objection to genre fiction. Point two, I don't particularly object to having genre fiction on the booker list either. Um, for, for me, genre fiction and literary fiction are not entirely separate character, uh, categories. They can entirely overlap um, and I don't have a problem with that. I don't yet know what my view is on having a graphic novel on the book along list, but having a crime novel on the book along list is not something that I object to in principle. That said, this book I really did not think should be on this list. And I'm going to try, I'm nodding my head about it, so I care that much. Um, I'm going to try and be fairly rational about that. But I, before I start, I should say I'm quoting from... Um, uh, copy on my laptop because I left my I, I left my paper copy somewhere and the person I left it with said to me uh, would you like me just to throw it in the recycling because I had been so brutal about it as I was reading it parts of it aloud uh, that recycling seemed the obvious thing to do I've never yet recycled a book but this may be the first time I do that I'm not sure I could inflict it on anyone else so I understand perfectly well that there is such a thing as generic convention um, there are certain expectations in a genre novel which the author has to fulfil in order for the readers to be satisfied with what that novel is. I also understand that the writing of a good uh, genre novel is often taking those conventions and twisting them a bit. And one thing I've been thinking about a lot as I've read this year's book a list so far, I'm now five and a half books in, um, is what is it that makes a good novel? So one thing that may come out of what is not being a good book a year for me so far uh, is I will have a lot to say about what I how, what makes a good novel and um, why ultimately a lot of these novels for me have not been good. But um, generic expectation. Um, so there are certain things that are typical, uh, are often the case uh, in crime novels. There is often a detective who has just been kicked out of his job somewhere, is out on his ear, who wants to prove himself. That detective is often hard drinking. That detective has often had a relationship which has broken down recently. That detective often has a particular case which is there in the back of his mind which he can't shake. I understand these are generic conventions. They are also cliches. This book has every single one of them. So it starts off by ticking a whole range of boxes uh, that, um, that are no surprise to anyone. I sort of could accept that. Um, but, uh, but given the other things going on in the book, it really began to grate. So the very least I expected of this book was that it would have a really good plot. It has been hailed as a fabulous crime novel. Um, for me, the plot, let's start with the good things. The plot basically worked. Um, I found the first hundred or so pages not compelling, even from a plot, plot, plot point of view, I can't even say it. Um, but by the time I was about half of the way through, I was interested to find out how she would unravel the plot. Um, it was not entirely predictable, or although parts of it, um, I guessed some distance before it actually happened. Uh, in general, the things that uh, were the critical uh, determinants of um, the unravelling uh, were things that had been mentioned fairly early on, which I hadn't particularly noticed at the time, um, and they weren't some sort of brand new idea thrown in at the end that suddenly miraculously solved everything, but we had no chance of working that out in advance. So from a plot point plot point of view, I still can't say it. Uh, this book, I think, I think works. Um, what I found tedious and depressing uh, about it was the level of cliche and the low quality of the writing throughout the book. And I'm going to, it's a little bit unkind of me, uh, but I'm going to quote bits of that because 
it's easy to point the finger at a book that um, I don't like and say I don't think it's any good and I don't think it should have been on this list. It's slightly harder to explain exactly why that's the case. And also some of these examples I think are really hilarious and I'm not sure that they were um, meant to be. So let's jump in. So this is the opening page of Snap, Belinda Bauer, book a long listed 2018. 20th of August, 1998, incidentally, shortly before I started university. It was so hot in the car that the seats smelled as though they were melting. Jack was in shorts, and every time he moved his legs, they sounded like sellotape. The windows were down, but no air moved, only small bugs whirred with a sound like dry paper. Overhead hung a single frayed cloud, while an invisible jet drew a chalky line across the bright blue sky. Sweat trickled down the back of Jack's neck, and he cracked open the door. Don't, said Joy. Mum said stay. I am staying, he said, just trying to get cool. It was a quiet afternoon, and there wasn't much traffic, but every time a car passed, the old Toyota shook a little. When a lorry passed, it shook a lot. Shut the door, said Joy. So this is completely passable, basically competent writing. It is, um, it's not overly frilly, it's very clear what's going on, um, but that does not make it good writing. Um, so the things that struck me as I went through with my close reading hat on. Um, sentence one, seats smelled as though they were melting. Sort of okay, but seats generally don't smell as though they're melting. They generally smell like rubber or um, like a substance that is melting, not as though they were melting. Number two, um, when Jack moves his legs, they sound like sellotape. I don't have an objection to that. I don't think it's a great image, but I don't think it's a terrible image. Um, the issue is the following sentence, something else is also a sound like. So there's a sort of repetition in that, which would not pass any um, good writing definition. Um, where do we go next? Overhead hung a single frayed cloud. Single frayed cloud is fine. It's clearly attempting to create some sort of atmosphere, the single frayed cloud. Um, it's not exactly a novel way of saying anything. Uh, an invisible jet drew a chalky line. Okay, there are jets. They're sometimes invisible. Again, that's not an interesting way to say anything. Chalky line, fair enough. It looks like chalk. Um, bright blue sky, isn't that just a bit of a cliche? There's nothing, there's nothing here that stands up and says, this is a new way of seeing the world. This is a new way of writing this scene. What it does is provide us with just enough adjectives to be able to make something fairly vivid um, without making it enticing or interesting. I don't believe that a child who is 10 which Jack, it turns out to be, is at this stage, would say to his sister, I'm just trying to get cool when open the door. That doesn't feel right to me as a phrase. Um, the Toyota shook a little, actually, as a sentence, work, that does work for me. When a lorry passed, it shook a lot. I don't like that repetition. It's quite crude. Um, shut the door, said Joy. Sort of works fine. So it's, it, is not a, it is not an opening. Let's start there. It is not an opening which says... This is a novel where real care has been taken about making these uh, images original, about seeing this world in a new way. It says this is a novel which aims to be workmanlike in what it says and aims to be vivid and is not aiming for deep psychological observation. That was where I'd got to by the end of the first page. You can see that my experience of this um, was not particularly pleasant. So let's get on to the psychological observation as we go through. So a lot of the novel is um, from the point of view of Jack, who is 10 at the beginning uh, and 13 um, in the later sections. This novel has been praised and is praised on its cover for its psychological observation. Here is an example of that psychological observation. Jack couldn't remember a time when he wasn't angry. It was always there like an itch sometimes mild and ignored, sometimes so big and sore that his slight frame could not contain it and it burst like a boil, spewing violence and bitter hatred that left him hollow. For a short while. He always filled up again, easily and to the brim. He wished it would stop. He wished he could stop. Every time he woke up, still tired, in a stranger's clean, comfortable bed, he wished for a childish miracle that would turn back the clock to before the hard shoulder, which is where the novel starts. Sometimes he felt as if he'd never left that road, or that day, 
as if he'd been stuck there ever since his mother had disappeared and everything that had happened since was a dream, a mirage, a fake life that he couldn't discover how to escape. Again, this is, this is perfectly fine writing for a commercial novel whose primary purpose is to get people through the plot and through the tension as quickly as possible. I don't, I don't deny that in the slightest. It is not, and, and, it's, and it's clear and I know what's going on and it is, it's easy to understand. Um, it doesn't attempt to really get into this psychology of this child. It doesn't attempt to go into in any depth what he's experiencing. There are, um, his mother has, has disappeared. That's clear from page two of the novel. I'm not revealing anything terrible there. Um, he was 10 at the time. There is the opportunity in this book to talk about or to, to see from inside the um, mind of this child the deep psychological trauma that he has um, experienced. And instead what we get is a sort of, it's almost painting by numbers. A child like this would have had nightmares and therefore we have some nightmares. Um, a child like this would feel angry and therefore we get what I think is an astonishingly pedestrian description of anger um, in the piece that I have just um, read out. A child like this would feel some resentment towards his younger siblings whom he then has to look after. And so we get some resentment. It's, none of it to me rang true. None of it really gave me the sense that um, that Bauer had tried to get into what was really happening um, and what these characters are really feeling and experiencing versus what a simple, superficial way is of describing what that would be. And that was a flaw for me again and again and again in multiple characters, that there is this claim to psychological accuracy, which simply for me was not borne out by any of the text. So, as you can also tell, I got more and more irritated with that over the course of the novel. Um, and then the third piece is, there is stuff in here which I cannot believe that an editor didn't just cut. Um, here is an example. I mean, this novel is, is sort of, um, has clearly learned the uh, show, don't tell um, lesson as well and I'll talk a bit about that in relation to another of the Booker uh, list which I've already finished as well. Um, but here is an example of scene setting which again to my mind and from where I come from as a reader is astonishingly pedestrian and I read this out to various people um, over the course of my reading of the book. Uh, they all agreed with me um, that it was awful. If you don't agree with me then please say so. I'm, I'm perfectly willing to have my views challenged. But this page really um, summed up quite a lot of things for me. So here we go. We're in the police station. The interview room at Tiverton Police Station was tiny, but it served many purposes. There was a table, small and formica, up against one wall. Metal shelving ran down the opposite wall and was stacked with copy paper and notebooks and toilet rolls, almost up to the high, narrow strip of window just under the ceiling. Still, we have exactly the right number of adjectives to make it vivid, but not get in the way. An old coffee machine and three mugs stood on the draining board of a grimy little sink. A broom and mop and bucket stood guard behind the door, while a photocopier hummed gently against the back wall. It was the Swiss army knife of rooms. Did you hear that? It was the Swiss army knife of rooms. Seriously, the, this novel starts, this room was tiny, but it served many, per this uh, novel has a chapter which starts, this, ro no this uh, room was tiny, but it served many purposes. It was the Swiss army knife of rooms. It's, it's an awful image. Even if it's meant to be funny, it's an awful image. And it's that sort of, in a, I don't know whether it's inability or unwillingness to search for an image which is truly telling and truly interesting versus in this case, just bad, or in many other cases, hugely cliched, that I just found so frustrating with this novel. And I genuinely couldn't understand why it has been so highly praised. The plot worked for me, it was fine. I was a bit frustrated that there was a rabbit pulled out of the hat at the end, um, which uh, hadn't been foreshadowed in any way. And um, 
um, which therefore felt like a bit of a cheap trick. Um, but the, pl I mean, the plot was fine. Um, but what got me again and again and again was the writing is boring. The imagery is, this is all to my mind, my opinion. Um, the, so the writing is boring, in my opinion. Um, the imagery is pedestrian. The cliches are all over the shop in the writing style, in the imagery, in the psychological observation. Um, and it's an interesting subject. A child who has to live uh, through in, from age 10 to age 13 after his mother has been uh, snatched away um, is an interesting subject. There is a huge amount that could be said about this. And saying that within the context of a, an exciting plot um, would be potentially a fantastic novel. And I could absolutely see that novel as being entirely justifiably on a book a long list, indeed on a book a short list, indeed winning. There is nothing about this being a crime novel which makes it a bad novel. That said, I think this is a bad novel. I don't think it should have been on this list. Um, and I cannot think of any justification for it being on this list other than I don't know, we should put a crime novel on because then it will show that we're in touch. Um, that's it, I'm stopping there. I've gone for, on far too long. Um, tell me whether you agree, disagree. Um, I'm going to come back with my next book of review more quickly than I came back with this one. I'm one and a half books further along the list than my videos would suggest in terms of my reading. Um, and so I'll get those out, but I am, I'm not enjoying this list. Let's put it that way. I am not enjoying this list. I have not got to the Andarche yet. I've not got to the Richard Powers yet. I think there is significant hope for both of those. I am not enjoying this list.